Mike. Cliff, Neil, Brian, Mike, Noel. Mike. Oh, I didn't see Noel. Yep. Oh. All right. So it being the evening of September 23rd at 7 o'clock, I'll call the meeting of the mm -hmm. Bellingham Conservation Commission to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th order uh, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted at this meeting. Board members will participate in this meeting remotely as this meeting will be accessible to the public via Zoom online option. Information and ins instructions are available at bellinghamma.org. Okay, so we will proceed with the opening of the first hearing. Um, this is going to be the continuation from Curtis Apartments. <coughs> Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold uh, public hearings in accordance with the Mass Wilderness Protection Act, Chairman Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 in the Bellingham Wilderness Protection Bylaw and the Notice of Intent for the proposed development for a Chapter 40B project consisting of five four-story residential buildings clubhouse, nine carports, utilities, landscaping, associated amenities and stormwater management system located at Assessor's Map 51, Lot 4, for a 4B, 6 and 8 at 161, 163 and 167 Mechanic Street, Bellingham. The project proposes 39,186 square feet of lane disturbance within the 100 foot buffer zone and 720 square feet of disturbance in the 25 foot no disturb zone associated with the bank of Curtis Pond. Jesse Jackson, Jesse Johnson. Johnson, Jesse Jackson. Sorry, Jesse. Not the first time. Yeah, you know, we're being we're being socially sensitive. Uh, Bowler Engineering, uh, Software and Math has submitted the final on behalf of Russell Dion Campanelli, Braintree Mass. The continuations will be held at the Bellinator Municipal Center um, via Zoom uh, at seven o'clock. So. Um, the commission has been out on site um, at our last uh, hearing. Uh, we requested a couple of pieces of information. Um, they have been provided. <clears throat> and if you would, Jesse, would you just <clears throat> um, share your screen and provide everybody an opportunity to refresh their memories and look at the wetland buffer restoration narrative? Sure, give that a shot. Okay, Jim, would you allow him to do that? Thank you. <laughs> so for everybody's information, the, this, this narrative was contained on the, in the plan as a record, but we want it as a separate document. It's easier to reference in the order of conditions and highlight it during the construction processes. <clears throat> Everyone should have received Everyone should have received this. Um, I just wanna make sure that um, there are no questions. This is exactly the protocol that we discussed at hearing and in the field. I see Mike, any questions there, Mike? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, this isn't per se for the restoration guidelines. It's actually a question related to the order of conditions. Should I wait? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No questions about the guidelines. They look good. Okay. Um, the second item uh, is the um, the vernal pool uh, certification, and after consultation with uh, our peer reviewers, our representative Matt Byrne um, and uh, applicants' representative, it's determined that. Um, our consultant, due to the fact that he co collected all the original baseline data, will make the submission uh, to certify the vernal pool, the expense of which will be deducted from the remaining balance of the peer review account, of which I think Frank can help me with that. It's somewhere around $10,000. Right. Okay, so I certainly anticipate that this task will not take $10,000. No, no. So um, upon completion of the certification, uh, the, the money will be uh, returned, refunded uh, post haste. 
And we just want to comment, we see um, Rusty on, on screen this evening. We just want to comment that, um, you know, um, there may be a question from Natural Heritage uh, requiring a little bit more information. So we would ask your agreement this evening uh, to allow us to withhold the return of that peer review money until such time that Natural Heritage um, is, is satisfied with the information that was sent in. Um, the Vernal Pool, I, I'm sure that the chairman will, will uh, reiterate this, but the Vernal Pool certification will have absolutely no effect on the project as is permitted um, um, with our order of conditions. There is no buffer zone, external buffer zone to a Vernal Pool under DEP standards. So certification means that the Vernal Pool ends at the edge of bank. So it will not affect the project in any way. And I hope it's okay because we put it in the permit, <laughs> which we're ready to. Well, like according to the conversation I had had with Jesse, Jesse had indicated to me that if that he was going to reach out to you, Russ, uh, if there were a problem, he would let me know uh, as soon as possible. Um, and that no news would be good news. So we didn't hear anything. So we're hoping that this is good news this evening. It is, uh, Mr. Chairman and, and Anne as well. I, um, I appreciate all the efforts and, and the requests and the clarity. There's been some really appropriate clarifications that came through over the last four or five days. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And I have no objection to the way you're proceeding. And I also have no objection to the way you want to handle the peer review account. I think that all makes complete logical sense. And, and um, if you need anything from me going forward, please ask and we will, um, we will assist in every way possible. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Now, um, are there any questions as the project, as we see the project? I know Mike had raised an issue uh, with the order of conditions. Uh, let's just make sure that there are no other questions related to the project in general. Okay, Mike, uh, relative to the order, the order has yeah, been number, let me get this up in a second, the order conditions went on, I think it was the last item, number 38, I think it was, uh, I'm scrolling down, hang on, uh, 29, 30, uh, yeah, 38, the following practices shall be employed post-construction, adherence to the operation and maintenance plan included with the drainage report for maintenance of the stormwater pro project, stormwater management system. So this, uh, O&M plan has not yet been created. It's supposed to be included eventually with the drainage report. No, it's in the drainage report. Okay, I didn't see it. Uh, is that document? Yeah, it's it's part it's part of what standard is that nine? Uh, maybe Frank can help us with that. It's yeah. it's in know. the appendix, and I can send it independently too if you want to. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, I'd appreciate it. I just want to have for my record. I don't have a question about it per se, except that I'd like to see it, and I. I must have missed it. I did glance through the documents, but yeah. I, I, for some reason, reading that, I, I picked up that it, I read it backwards, I guess, that, that it wasn't included yet. It was going to be post-construction. Um, so, okay, that's that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to see that they did put something in there about non-sodium isolating agents along the access road, because that's so close to Curtis Pond and at the entrance there, and that nothing should be lifted over the curb, and that should help avoid something tumbling down the slopes into Curtis Pond with uh, potential contaminants if they do plow. Yeah, that was specifically yeah. uh, um, put in there because of your question previously. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> and so, Mike, what and happened? Curtis Pond thanks you too. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, you know, the language does say the following practices shall be employed post construction because it, upon the issuance certificate of compliance, those will be ongoing conditions. Right, right. Yeah, I got that too. Yeah, that right. makes sense. But I just, I just had missed the document. So if we can get that after the fact uh, without having to find it in the documents, I don't want to hold things up now. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay, no problem. So that being the case, I'll attend a motion to close the hearing and sign and issue the prepared order of conditions. So moved. Hello, second. Oh, Ariane. Ariane's here. Okay. Noel also. Oh, that was, that was, that was Noel. Noel. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have a motion to second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Aye. Mr. Vice Chairman? Not aye. Okay, by unanimous vote. Thank you. Um, we will find a time as soon as possible to get members of the commission together for signature. Who does the um, original order of conditions go to? That can go to Campanelli, uh, Mr. Chairman. We will, um, you know, do all the appropriate recording. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you as well. Much appreciated. We look forward to a successful project. As do we. Piles of information. Here. Okay, so we'll just start with this one. And the, yep. I think. Yep. Um, I think I see Tom will be here somewhere. Um, oh, no, Dan's here. Yeah, Tom's not here tonight. Just make okay. The Bellamy Conservation Commission will hold uh, continuations of public hearings in accordance with the Mass Wealth Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40. In the felony and mutton's protection bylaw on the notice of intent of the proposed construction of a single family dwelling and associated grading and landscaping within the 100 foot buffer zone to boarding vegetative wetlands located at assessors map 64, block 212, block 42, 36 candlelight lane bellion. Tom Libby, Karen Heldon, uh, Milford Mass has submitted the filing on behalf of South Center Realty, Quarry Drive. Uh, the continuations will be held via Zoom. Uh, at seven o'clock on September 23rd, 2020. Um, okay. Um, Good evening. Um, Dan Hazen, Gary and Halnon, representing um, um, South Center Realty. So has he presented this one or is this? Yeah, he has already, he's already presented it. Uh, okay. What happened was the plan of record showed a rain garden on it. And this lot, lot 42, is one of the ones where the rain garden is not going to be required due to the fact that you guys are, are doing and we are, are going to permit later tonight, I think, um, the connection between the two isolated vegetative wetlands. So this rain garden will not be uh, necessary due to the um, proposed rain garden construct. I mean, the uh, created what? wetland. Correct. So what we needed was we needed a revised plan that showed the removal of the rain garden so that there would be no confusion. And I know that that plan has been provided. And if, do you have a copy of that by any chance? Uh, I should, I'm looking through my plans. Okay. <laughs> Um, and yes, I do. So we are, they have removed the rain garden. There is a split rail fence still shown along the edge of the 25 foot buffer, um, or actually the edge of the um, 25, yeah, 25, 25 foot buffer. Right. And um, other than that, it looks like the plan is very similar to the one that was provided before. Um, as far as the rain garden plan, I don't know if I want to, I mean, the um, wetland replication plan, I don't know if I want to confuse the two. We're still waiting on a DEP file number for that. Um, Unfortunately, but we're, we're hearing that one a little later. Could you share that for the, to the, for the benefit of the commission? I know this information was, oh, I just got an EBG update. Share which, the, the plan? Yeah, yeah, if you could just share that. I, I, we distributed to the commission but PDFs on a computer screen. So if you could do it now during the hearing process, that would be really appreciated. All right. Okay. So this, this is the revised plan. The rain garden in the area in the back here has been removed. The split rail fence is still shown along the 25 foot buffer. Um, other than that, the grading has remained the same other than work in the um, new buffer zone. 
So. Okay. <clears throat> um, that's that's the only issue we had outstanding. Any Are there any questions from the commission? I have one. Okay. Um, what is the length of the fence line on the back of that lot? It goes close. Oh, the split rail fence? Yeah. Approximately. Uh, well, the frontage is 60 feet, so the back's probably going to be about 65 because it's on a little bit of a diagonal. Okay. My concern was that, and if it's still in the same order of conditions, and that part hasn't changed, that it specified that on the split rail fence there would be approximately every 50 feet a badge. Is that still the case? I think what we're doing now is we're looking at um, making making it every vertical post. Okay, so that'd be every 10 feet. Where, wherever, whatever the width of the vertical posts are, it'll be every vertical post. Okay, so on this revised plan, can they scroll to the left a little bit? Where it shows the posts and rail fence. So should that medallion's information on the note number two be changed? Because that wouldn't read that way. I wouldn't think that they're putting on every vertical post. They're only putting on one per site. If it's 65 feet, one per po one post per site. I'm a little concerned that's way under. Where do you see that? What's that? Number two. Construction allows subject to easement right away. No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. At the bottom with the post. Right above the detail. Well, what we'll do, you know, rather than look for another plan revision, uh, we'll make sure that that this is specified in the order. Uh, and now that we have um, Dan here, Dan, some of these lots are already constructed. Are the fences up yet? I do not know. I haven't been out there in a while. Um, okay. I can't imagine that they would get a fence company to go out for each lot. I'm sure you'd probably do the whole thing do a couple at a time. So I, I, I don't know. I was actually planning on going out there tomorrow. So and I can report back to Ann and let her know. Yeah, and we haven't received any requests for badges either, so. So, so we'll go up to six per lot, roughly, if they're 65 feet. Is that right, since we're doing if, one every? If, if the vertical posts are 10 feet on centers, then it will be whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Okay. All right. As long as that, I just thought one per site wasn't enough, but if they're going every vertical, that's great with me, as long as they get done that way. Yeah, we'll make sure it gets done. And not only that, when they come in to get the badges, we'll make sure that the badges are put on every vertical post. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. We noticed when we were up there uh, on Saturday that one of the newly constructed homes had a rain garden and the, the new homeowner had done some additional plantings around the back and the ends of the rain garden. Yep. That was one of these lots that if, because the fence hadn't been put up yet, if the fence does get installed, would those plantings be behind the fence? Is that something that's Permitted. No, I, I think on the lot, that was next to the lot that we walked into to access the isolated vegetative wetland. Correct. Yeah, um, I, there was there were posts in the back showing where the fence was going to go. Uh, here we go. So that was on lot 50? Yeah. So, yeah. so the plantings, and you can, you can see where the fence line is. Um, I can't, this is one of the problems with not doing this in person. We can't lay a scale on that between the back of the rain garden and the fence, but it's probably about five feet. So if the, if the plantings were on either side of, to the left and the right of the rain garden and some were behind the rain garden, mm -hmm. then yeah. they would be, um, they would be behind the fence, correct? Mm, I don't think so because they planted some rose bushes along the back. And it looked like it was right at the edge of the grading. Okay, so that's that's in front. The fence would be on the back yes. of the property line there, or yes. would it? Okay, all right. I just didn't understand. Oh, that's these. No, the the split rail fence is in front of the rain guard. The proposed, yeah, correct. The proposed split rail fence will be. Oh, I see what you're saying. So those plantings would be behind the fence. 
and the rain gardens are behind the fence. Correct. Okay. Yep, you're all right. But is that, are, are we, is, is planting behind the fence that's badged for conservation uh, something that's permitted? Well, if, if we have rain gardens there and we have an easement for maintenance of the rain gardens, uh, so some activity has to be permitted for maintenance of the rain gardens. So I don't, uh, you know, I don't well, know. I'm just concerned people are going to be planting a bunch of stuff back there and then we're going to put up this fence and they're going to have trouble accessing their plantings and that, that could potentially cause some conflict down the road. Mm. Like, do these people know that there's going to be a fence running along there? Well, that would be a question for, for Gary and Helen yeah. to answer. Right. You know, these people may think that, you know, they, they have full access to that and that's not actually the case. I do not know if these people have been made aware that there's going to be a fence in their backyard. Um, again, as we discussed out there Saturday, I, I'm not privy to the, the documents that the people receive when they, the, the lots transfer. I mean, I have been writing up a, a, um, a rain garden kind of maintenance to be incorporated with the, to give to the realtors to give to the homeowners, but I mean. Well, can you, can you see the, the problem in that somebody buys a house, they yeah. get what they get, and then six months later, somebody comes along and plops a fence across the back inside what they think is the back of their yard. And I think what happened is the reason we had the fence placed there was to prevent people from doing what they did up on Jordan Lane, which was putting a pile of mulch in there and creating a raised bed. Right. So the fence was supposed to preclude people from doing that. Um, that's, that's interesting. Um, well, so um, Gary and Hellman will be the one who is, continues to report on the rain gardens and their status. Right. Um, until such time that, is it a homeowners association takes it over? Is that how it works? I believe so, yeah. So, I, um, and how often are you supposed to be uh, submitting those? Yearly? Uh, no, we were going to be doing them quarterly right now. Quarterly, okay. Just to try to keep up so that, you know, I mean, this is going to be a lot of transfers going on very quickly. So if we can get things... Um, resolved sooner than later, it'll kind of ease the, the issue as far as like on this lot 50, you know, that's a fairly new house, so. Agreed. That's the one we were looking at. Yeah. Right. So I'll make the recommendation to um, the developer to make sure that the homeowners are aware and that there will be a fence going through there. Okay. You know, perhaps they can, move their plantings or if they're, yeah. Yeah, they, they may, I think Neil's point is well taken. They figure they're gonna own that extra 15 feet and, and technically they do, but it's gonna be part of a no disturb zone because we don't want people, we're trying to protect the resource of the rain gardens because we've seen what happens if if they're not properly badged and constructed and, and protected. Um, Neil, you still there? Yes. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? Um, yeah, I just, I think it's going to be an ongoing, I think it's going to be an ongoing issue. I'm here. Did you, did you need me? I'm sorry, we did you call me? <laughs> We'd be lost without you. Hmm. I appreciate it, Neil. <laughs> so I think Jim just volunteered to go out and check them regularly. Is that what he's saying? Do we yeah, every quarter. Every, uh, once a <laughs> month, I think I heard. So I, I, I believe we're going to have to address that 
uh, post issuance of permits, that particular lot is just barely in the buffer zone. Lot 51 is not in the buffer zone and it's gonna have a rain garden. Um, so that's not jurisdictional. And um, 49 is partially in the buffer zone. But for lot 42, um, the fence, there is no rain garden and the fence will clearly mark the uh, edge of the uh, no disturb zone. So for lot 42, um, I'd like to entertain a motion to close that hearing uh, and uh, issue the prepared, sign and issue the prepared order conditions. Are, are Mr. Chairman, are we prepared to do that prior to approving the compensation? For the rain garden, I think we're gonna we're looking at doing that um, at seven thirty. Um, we I could make a suggestion. We could continue this hearing till after the next hearing and then reopen this one if that would make you feel better. Well, we we generally have a policy of not doing things out of order. We do. Okay. So, um, to... I'll just tell a motion to continue the hearing for 36 uh, Candlelight Lane, Lot 42, to this evening at um, 7.50. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so Dan, if you'll hang in there. Are you going to are you going to be working on the candlelight lane parcel C? Yes, I am. Okay. So now we have a situation where we have um, four lots. Um, these lots are, are going to be continued. Mm -hmm. It's lots 76, 79, 80, and 81. Um, 16 Celestial Circle, five Lover's Lane, seven Lover's Lane, and nine Lover's Lane. Um, we're going to look for a time to continue these. And we're also going to look for a time to set up a site walk. Um, it might be a good opportunity for us to take a look at potential dates on Saturdays for site walks. We have to um, do a site walk. Uh, on Mill Street for the bypass road behind the town hall. And we could include these four lots after. I'm looking at two possible dates because um, we're continuing. Um, Red Mill has been continued until the 28th. So we would add these four unit lots onto the evening of the 28th. Um, I'm thinking we could go out on the 3rd or the 17th of October. We have two dates. Can we get a number of people out on either one of those? Either one for me. That's encouraging. Either one works for me. That's very good. Okay, that's two. Brian? As of now, I'm all right with either date as well. Perfect. Um, is Ariane still there? Can you make one of these? All right. Well, let's go for October 3rd. That way, if we have a freak snowstorm. <laughs> Then we can go to the 17. Bite your tongue. Yeah, I know. I just did. October 3rd and 8:30. Yep. All right. So what I'll do is I will entertain a motion to um, conduct a site walk commencing at Mill Street at 8:30 
on October 3rd to be followed with uh, site walks for the four previously mentioned lots, uh, lot 76, 79, 80, and 81. And to continue the four hearings to the evening of October 28th at eight o'clock. Second. Well, did you move that? Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay. That's what Discussion? I thought. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It's by unanimous vote. Okay. This is going on top here. Yep. All right. Okay. We're on schedule. The Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold continuations of public hearings in accordance with the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bellingham Wetlands Protection Bylaw on the notice of intent for the proposal to create 4,280 square feet of wetland replication on Candlelight Lake Parcel C to replace nine previously proposed rain gardens on Lot 42, 36 Candlelight Lane, Lot 43, 38 Candlelight Lane, Lot 44, 40 Candlelight Lane, Lot 46, 7 Northern Lights Way, Lot 47, 5 Northern Lights Way, Lot 48, 3 Northern Lights Way, Lot 57, 21 Jordan Avenue, Lot 58, 19 Jordan Avenue, Lot 59, 17 Jordan Avenue of the Lakeview Estates Subdivision. Dan Hazen, Gary Hallman, Milford Mass has submitted the filing on behalf of South Center Realty, Corey Drive, Milford. The continuations will be held online via Zoom uh, on September 23rd at 7.30. Hello, Dan Hazen, Gary and Halnon still. Um, so we performed the site walk on September 18th and met with Art Allen out there on site. He had excavated a small pit right in the middle of where the proposed replication area is gonna be. Um, he provided a report, I believe. Um, yes, no, there it is. Right. So basically showing that the soils are going to be a gravelly, cobbly sand. Um, he did find groundwater about 16 inches below the surface, which should lend itself pretty well to being able to um, excavate the area and not create a large amount of disturbance. Um, there wasn't much topsoil as seen out there. So. Um, if you have any questions at this time, I'd be willing to answer anything you have. <clears throat> okay, to get into it in a little more depth, um, members of the commission uh, reviewed the site. Uh, Arthur Allen uh, had dug um, a soil evaluation pit. We saw a clear break in soils at 16 inches, no topsoil. Um, a lot of cobbles, but uh, clear evidence of high groundwater. So the most important thing for wetland, wetland restoration or replication is establishment of hydrology. Um, the commission and the consultant for the applicant um, agreed that the likelihood of success here uh, is, is very high. <clears throat> um, the protocol had been submitted previously and we went over it at uh, the night where we opened the hearing. Uh, we've distributed the, um, uh, the conditions for the order of conditions of the draft, the, the draft. <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. And so one of the uh, 
What are the conditions that we haven't um, discussed and we're going to bring up now is uh, condition number 22. Um, whenever there's wetland replication or restoration, uh, a, bond, a cash bond is required. And so I'm gonna read that condition. Um, <clears throat> there are two relevant um, sections. So uh, section 22, prior to the commencement of construction activities, the developer shall post a cash bond in the amount of $15,000 with the town treasurer. Evidence of the establishment of this bond shall be presented to the commission before construction begins. Terms for the release of the bond shall be as follow. At the end of a three year monitoring period in which the commission shall receive yearly monitoring reports, uh, the same certified professional identified in condition 20 above, currently Arthur Allen, and upon conducting a follow-up inspection, verifying compliance with the commission satisfaction, shall release the bond to the applicant. Because the activities here and regulate restoration, the applicant may petition the commission for a release of a portion of the bond uh, prior to the expiration of the three-year monitoring period. The commission shall use its discretionary authority when evaluating any such request. So that's the bond. But then we also go on in section 29 to talk about the actual monitoring reports. <clears throat> so 29, I'm gonna take a drink of water. <clears throat> Thank you. Wetland construction monitoring reports shall be generated by the certified wetland scientist uh, for three growing seasons subsequent to creation and planting. The first growing season post planting observation shall be made in late spring and late summer. The second and third growing seasons post planting observation shall be made in late summer. The monitoring report shall provide data and insight by assessing the design elements and goals compared to the field characteristics. Adaptive management action shall be provided to adjust or remedy any issues for compliance with the approved plans. The three monitoring reports issued to the BCC in the fall shall address plant establishment, ecosystem health function, plant survival rates, erosion or non-vegetated areas, invasive plant species, wildlife habitat features, observations, and recommendations to best assure that these areas are moving toward a naturalized, no maintenance landscape setting. At any time after the first two years of monitoring, the applicant or its representative may petition the BCC for a release or partial release of the bond money referenced in condition number 22 above. Now, Dan hasn't heard this. Um, we're taking the unusual step of presenting this um, and, and alerting you to this fact because um, as we discussed in the field, <clears throat> we need this work to be completed by the end of October to assure um, maximum um, opportunity for the plantings to succeed. So um, we have one additional condition um, that we wanna bring up at the public meeting. It's condition number 28. It, it, it kind of gets to Mike, Mike's previous comment. And it says, fencing is required Fencing is required on the completion of the restoration area. No, what? Oh, no. Fencing is required and on the complete. There should be a comma there. Fencing is required and on the completion of the rest restoration area shall be installed on lots 42, 43, 44, 46, 47, and 48. No disturbed zone badges shall be attached at the location of each vertical post. These no disturbed zone badges are available at the conservation office. So these fences have to be installed upon the completion of the restoration area. Because we've noticed that there's been some um, dumping of yard wastes. Once this area is built, we don't want people traipsing in there and dumping their Christmas trees and um, their autumn leaves 
and whatever else they want to get rid of. So we need to have those fences installed and the badges uh, in place. So those are the only, I mean, I mean Dan, yeah. go ahead. Uh, so Dan, uh, how did you make out with the cleanup of that yard waste um, from the letters that you sent out to those residents? Uh, like I said, I was going to go out there tomorrow to follow up and take a look at those along with some of the rain gardens. So um, I don't have an answer for, for you tonight. Mm -hmm. I know the letter was sent out. It was yeah. sent out certified mail, return receipt. So I'm, I will follow up on that. Well, what we did also in this order, because this order, you know, we're prepared uh, to close the hearing tonight, but we want you to be aware of your duties and responsibilities um, because in the interests of all of our interests in getting this thing planted this year so we don't have to wait until spring, uh, we have one last condition and it's relative to the, you know, the dumping and we have uh, an ongoing condition upon issuance of the certificate of compliance shall be the maintenance of the open space area as a no disturb zone. Although individual homeowners shall bear the responsibility for long-term care, maintenance, and if necessary, replacement of fencing on their property, those individual homeowners, if violating the no disturb zone with uh, placement of any material, including but not limited to grass clippings, shrub trimmings, um, yard waste or household waste shall bear full responsibility for cleanup and if required restoration. Um, I think we have, didn't we have something in there saying if they didn't clean it up? Yes, we, we also included a condition in there that if it's not cleaned up, then while you're in there doing all this work, we would ask that you take care of that as well. If they haven't cleaned it up. Oh. Yeah, that won't be a problem. I mean, as far as for those uh, 46 and 47 mm -hmm. or 48, I can't remember which one it was out there, but. So does everyone see where the proposed fence is around this area? Yes. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's just on the inside of the easement. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what we don't have is uh, the DEP file number. So, it mm -hmm. is not possible for us to, we can sign. The, we can close the hearing mm -hmm. and sign the order and issue only when we receive that, if that's the pleasure of the commission. Well, we can't. We Mr. can Chairman, close the hearing and we can close the hearing and we can sign the document, but we can't issue it. So um, it's just an administrative thing um, where we have to have the DEP file number on the document before we sign it. I've spoke to Gary Dolmain. He's he basically was as long as the commission was satisfied with everything that we had discussed. I believe he was he didn't really want to weigh in on it too much, just in case of any further down the road actions that might be taken. So, so yeah. So did he did he say he was going to issue a number? Yeah, it, that that was the thing. Um, I spoke to Gary and also Judy Schmidt, and they both said that there was going to be a number coming. And I have emails from them I can forward to you, but no, it's okay. Yeah, I just want you to know, Dan, that I also reached out. I reached out to uh, to Gary Dalmain today. I left him a message. Um, I also reached out to Kim uh, Roth, um, who was uh, was going to assist. I don't usually take this action. Um, I just felt like this was an important number to get so that we can get going on this project. Um, I checked my email earlier. I didn't receive a number yet, but I would anticipate that it's coming soon or shortly. Yeah, I don't. Did you, you didn't get anything yet? No, nothing yet. And I've been, I kept an eye open on the uh, website today and there was nothing up there that would help. Mm -hmm. It's still closed. 
Well, <laughs> I, I don't know when, because we have a bunch of people. tomorrow morning. <laughs> Probably tomorrow morning. You're right. You're right. And we need we need a, a number of documents to be signed. Um, so once again, as it seems to be on Thursdays, <laughs> Thursday after a meeting appears to be signature day. Um, um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, can we can we back up for a second? Sure. Before we move on to tomorrow's schedule, about what are we going to do with this? Well, what I was thinking is um, we can close the hearing and vote to sign and issue the order upon um, receipt of the DEP file number, if that will make the administrator happy. Have we, have we ever signed an order without a DEP number, ever? We won't be signing it. We cannot sign it. No, no, we, we cannot. Well, we're not going to. We, have we ever done what we're going to do other than sign it before we got a DEP number ever? We have closed hearings uh, in anticipation of a DEP file number, but not signed. Otherwise, we wait for two more weeks, and you know now we're into uh, well into the planting season, and getting the work done might be difficult. In other words, we close the hearing with the provision that there are no signatures until we get the file number. If we get the file number tomorrow, then, then you know we can sign it. The order has been prepared and distributed. It's just, you know, like like Ann said, it's an administrative. Um, I think she's over there checking. She's over there checking now to see if we got it. <clears throat> We haven't received it yet. Is that okay? Neil, are you okay with that? Essentially what we're doing is we're closing the hearing. And sometimes what we do, what we like to do is close the hearing and sign an issue. In this instance, we can close the hearing we have the document prepared, but we can't sign it. Well, what's what's our legal obligation once we close the hearing? Right now, there's there, we there's normally it would be 21 days to issue, but we close the hearing, and if we close it with the provision, if everything is if we're all in agreement that we've covered all our bases and that it's an appropriate location and the activity has a high likelihood of success, then, you know, the hearing's closed with the provision that we get the file number. And when we get the file number, because it's already closed with that provision, we just sign it. So we don't have to wait two weeks. Maybe we have to wait till someday next week. Maybe it'll come in tomorrow morning. I don't know. But like I say, Ian's checking right now. If we had... If we had the file number now, it would be so much easier. We'd be ready to go. If the right, but we, we don't. No. That, that usually we won't even hold a hearing if we don't have a number. No, that's not true. Um, that, that, that's not true. We, we've done that. We have done that in the past. But we've never signed the document without a file number. Mr. Chair, are we in trouble legally? Going back to what Neil asked, if the 21 days starts clicking away and for some reason the state sits on it, has a major COVID infection and shuts down for three weeks or something. Are we no. in a problem situation with that? No. no, 20, there's there's, no 21 day. It's there's all nothing. been suspended by the governor's order. There is no 21 day. 21 days is the normal procedure, but all deadlines have been suspended by the governor. So, you know, when we receive an application, we don't have to hold a hearing within 21 days. Um, if, if, if we close a hearing, we don't have to issue the permit within 21 days. These are unusual times, and the government has made allowances uh, to assist commissions and other public boards in um, so.
let's 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 develop a consensus here. What do you? So tell me what you guys are thinking here. D, all of the above. All of the above. You don't have to clarify that one a little bit. <laughs> That's not helpful. <laughs> no. Well, I don't know if it'll help at all. I can't sign tomorrow. I can sign Friday, but I won't be. I won't be in town tomorrow morning or afternoon till late. That's okay. We'll we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Uh, with the precedent, not precedent setting approval, but not signing until we get what we need and moving that that much farther, mainly in, in lieu in light of the fact that we want this to succeed from a planting point of view. If, however, just to be clear, my opinion would be if it was just because the developer really wanted to get the project started and building some more houses, I would not be as amenable to changing our precedent at all. Okay. No, that's noted. But I think that uh, based on the fact that you know we have experience with a consultant and um, the project, mm -hmm. I think, has more value to the commission than the individual rain gardens it's replacing. And considering that because of the development of Lot 46 led to a groundwater breakout that of, has already uh, substantially increased the wetland area, uh, I think that this is a good, I think this is good for us. The fact that it might be good for, <laughs> for the applicant is secondary to me. No, I, I don't think anyone's questioning. I don't think anyone's questioning the validity of the project or, or the necessity of the project. I think it's just a procedural issue of, of kind of, again, doing things sort of out of order. Okay. I get it. I get it. So we need to do something. Yeah, well, we need and to. I, I suppose I could go along with that, but but if, if it goes wrong, I will say I told you so. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, well. So once again, what we're looking at doing is just closing the hearing with the provision that we sign an issue upon receipt of the file number. And if it takes, as uh, I don't know if it was Mike said, if it takes two weeks to get the file number, that's not our fault. And Ian has already extended herself to try to get that file number. So it'll be up to Dan to pester them to get it. And if he's not successful, we don't sign it. We can't legally sign it. But we can be prepared to sign it when we get it. That, I guess that's, you know, But it's up. It's up to the board. Yeah, no, I, I, I'll, I'll go along with that. Are you sure? Uh, uh, Neil, he just said. He Neil, okay. I want to make sure that everybody's. Well, it, you know, I mean, it does, doesn't. You know, I'm, I'm not in my, my normal comfort zone with that. But, but I mean, we, we, you know, we won't sign until we get the number. And if we don't ever get the number, we won't ever sign it. That is correct. I trust the administrator. Well, I'm glad someone does. <laughs> yes. <coughs> this, okay. this is a, a very unique situation that we have here. You mean someone who's not married to her? her. All right, well, maybe what I should do is not entertain a motion. Maybe I should um, let a commissioner make the motion. That way, everyone will be clear. Oh, well, it's pretty deafening. In the interest of moving things along, Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to uh, close the hearing with the provision that the order of conditions, is that what we're signing? Eventually, yeah. yeah. The order of conditions will not be signed until such time as we have received and have on file with us the DEP um, project number. Okay, we, we have a motion, and was that uh, Noel? Yes. 
a uh, motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. I don't hear any opposition, so it's a unanimous vote. So the hearing's closed. We will, uh, we will anxiously await the uh, file number. As soon as I get it, it will be sent right over. Okay, Ian will probably get a copy of it too. That's okay. Oh. Yep, okay. Now we're gonna do 42, lot 42. And okay, so now that we've closed this, okay. I'm gonna open up the continuation uh, for lot 42. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna dispense with the reading of the advertisement. Um, this was um, the lot where the rain garden was being replaced by the replication that we referenced in the previous hearing that was just closed. I, I think Neil was, had um, the biggest, con biggest concern about this one. Um, does this provide you a little more level of comfort? Well, a little bit, other than the fact that we haven't actually signed an issue to the other order yet. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, uh, well, this will give uh, the applicant an opportunity to post that bond. Because while we don't have the file number and we haven't signed the paperwork, we are going to need that bond before work commences. Correct. Right. So, um, you can also hold this one out until we get the number and issue the other one and issue both of them at the same time, right? Did anybody, did everybody hear that suggestion? Could you, yeah, that was a good, a good idea. Uh, I, I'm, I suggested that, um, if you're still uncomfortable about this, we can wait until we um, get the other order ready to go to be signed and we can sign lot 42 at the same time. That would, that would be acceptable. Okay. Makes a lot of sense to me. <clears throat> okay. So in that case, I will entertain a motion um, to close this hearing for lot 42 and to sign the prepared order of conditions uh, at the same time that we sign the order of conditions for candlelight lane parcel C, uh, wetland replication. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, opposed? All right, by unanimous vote. What's the matter, Brian? You got no audio? Yeah, I'm not hearing him. He's not, he's muted. Oh, no, he's probably talking to himself. <laughs> right. Brian, unmute yourself. Brian, unmute yourself. I'm muted. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there he is. All right, you can hear me now? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you now. Yeah, ah, shut up. <laughs> oh, man. All right. All right, well, thank you very much. And I will get you that number and... Um, I'll let you know on the reports what's going on with the dumping. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. We appreciate right. that. Have a great night. I think that's it. Okay, yeah, you too. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Oh, Donovan Martinez. Is he? Mm -hmm. Um, I see that Don just um. Don just came on board. Um, I want to speak to him directly and to give the commission that little update a couple of members heard. Um, yeah, Don, Ian and I were out on the site today and we issued the emergency certification that was needed for the cleanup to progress. Thank goodness that it, uh, the right. conditions were so dry because the um, material was fairly contained. It didn't. It wasn't transported uh, in the, into the water column. So yeah, that's what that's what Tom told me. So good. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I missed I missed the uh, the, the recap on that. What was the uh, where was that and what was it? 
Okay, at the uh, water filtration beds behind Stalbert School. Um, I think there were six of them there. Four. 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 Okay. You know the big uh, filter beds out by the town well? Yes. Okay. So the process is that they have large filter bags. They pump the material from those beds into the bags, uh, and then they sit there, and the water drains out, and it's clean. It's filtered. Um, one of the bags broke. Uh, and when it broke, you know, some of the material ran back inside and some of the material uh, went out through the fence, uh, down the slope and uh, into the resource area. It's the large wetland system associated with Stahl Brook. Uh, so DEP was out there and DEP was not comfortable letting any cleanup efforts take place until someone from the commission went out and took a look at it uh, and would provide permission through an emergency certification. So we, Ian and I went out, we took a look at it, we walked around in the swamp and it was, the swamp was dry. And that was good because this material was very thick, very dense. It was the consistency and color of dark chocolate. <laughs> so it's heavy mineral, it's, it's heavy, it's heavy metals, not meaning radioactive, but it, the metals have participated out into this sludge. The plants remove iron and manganese, manganese, so it's it's mostly iron and manganese sludge. Right. But it's out there in a resource area. So what we did is we said, okay, we issued the emergency certification. And as we usually do, we put commission uh, conditions on the emergency cert. And in this case, you know, once they've effected the cleanup, then we'll see if any additional restoration will be required. Based on what we saw, it could be nothing more than just hand casting some wetland seed mix into the disturbed areas. This stuff did not percolate into the ground and due to the density and thickness, heaviness of the material, it didn't migrate that far. So they're gonna scrape it all out or actually they're gonna wet it and back it and then remaining areas will be scraped out. But the swamp was uh, cattails and reed canary grass primarily. And th those are all rhizomes and they're below the surface. So we're almost at the end of the growing season. It's never good to see this kind of an incident occur, but if it's gonna occur, this was the perfect time. So um, what we'll do is we'll keep everybody apprised of where we're going. Um, we'll have more information tomorrow as the cleanup progresses. We'll have an idea of what it looks like. Um, one thing that uh, Ian did mention um, was that we think it's advisable to prevent occurrences, to reoccurrences, is to build a little earthen berm behind the fence and then to put some, you know, um, filter fabric or some kind of material on it so that if we have another break, it's all contained within the, the lagoons. I think the environmental firm that was on the on site um, today, Don, um, recognized that as well, and they would probably suggest that to happen. It's just a precaution so we wouldn't have that type of a spill um, in the future. Yeah, no, it's, if, it happened, um, if it happened once, it may happen again, and we may not be so yeah. lucky with the conditions. Yeah, it's um, we're we're we still haven't completely nailed down what yeah. if this is going to be our routine plan for dis for getting the sludge out of there. Um, we've done it once before and it worked pretty well. This time it actually was working really well. And I think uh, Tom got a little greedy and pumped well, maybe more into that than, and blew the seam because we were pretty much ready on the last days of wrapping it up because he was getting uh, so much of the sludge. And what, what happens is you put the sludge in those, these bags, mm -hmm. water seeps out overnight, you pump them back up the next day, but you leave them over the winter. And then that, which is more like, um, like um, chocolate frosting <laughs> becomes the consistency of uh, coffee ground, coffee ground, coffee grounds, and then therefore disposal doesn't it disposals by the ton, so it doesn't have a water weight. Yeah. So that worked really well last time, uh, and this time it was working really even better until um, we we found out that the the, the bags can't take 
everything we want to give it to the hospital. Well, I asked if it was equipment failure or if it was. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was really, you know, we had never seen one rupture like that before. So we didn't really think we could rupture. Uh, and we now we know. Now <laughs> so, we know. Yes, we do. <laughs> or, I mean, who knows? It could have been, it could have been some kind of de defect, but, I, you know, it's, uh, it was, we were very pleased with the amount of sludge we were getting into the bags, much more than we got in the last time we did it. Mm -hmm. But apparently, um, maybe relief valves or something. We'll, we'll talk with the manufacturers, and, and it's entirely possible we'll, we'll have a different technique and, and won't use the bags again the next time we go to clean it. So, mm -hmm. okay. Well, uh, according until to the, the bag blows. According to the cleanup crew, um, we're we're anticipating this should be cleaned up by the end of tomorrow, maybe. Well, they were supposed to, I, I haven't checked, but Tom said that we're going to work into the night, so. Yeah, that's, they started working when we were down there. Yeah, they, so I don't think darkness drove them out. I think they brought in lights and are working on it. Yeah, he anticipated doing some more work in there tomorrow. There was a small area, uh, a depression just outside the fence uh, to the south, and they were concerned that that might have been a pool of water, but based on the vegetation that was available, the overstory was 100% upland. There was no shrub layer. And the only herbaceous layer we could see was on the border of where the sludge had collected. And it was all field grass. So I think it was just an area that was kind of dammed up when the, when the, uh, when the pond, settling ponds were created, materials excavated and put back there. That's what I think. Probably. So, they were built in 91. Oh, geez, I thought it was maybe 30 years ago, but 91, okay. <laughs> About 30 years ago. <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. Fox Pond Road. Um, the Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold continuations of public hearings in accordance with the Mass Wants Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 on the notice of intent for the installation of an 18 inch uh, RCP across Box Pond Road to address existing flooding and roadway degradation. And the area is located within the buffer zone to uh, approximate to boarding vegetated wetlands, Bill Housing, Land Planning, Hartford Avenue has submitted the filing on behalf of Don DiMartino, DPW Director, Blackstone Street Building. And, uh, the continuations will be held uh, online via Zoom on Wednesday, September 23rd at eight. Okay. All right. Bill. Yes. You're ready to go. Okay. So uh, after the, at the site walk, it was determined that we would move the outlet approximately 10 feet westerly which we updated the plan and got plans to the commission, I think yesterday. Uh, grading should all work just fine. And now we're not gonna endanger that large tree at the uh, outlet. I think that was the only change to the plan. And Dawn, before that gets put in, we'll need to restake that outlet. So you know right where it's going. Okay, yeah, we're, I've got to talk to the property owner. We may may move fairly quickly on this and use yeah. the contractor that we have in town. Oh. Um, if I can get a right of entry from the property owner and then follow it up with, a, with the acquisition of town meeting of the actual easement. But if we can get a right of entry, we may be able to get him out there um, fairly quickly. So I'll keep okay. you posted. It wouldn't yeah, be like tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah. I'll probably have harvest. that easement plan done for early in the week for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. From our perspective, uh, that's the best case scenario because yeah. that burrow pool is bone dry. Mm -hmm. yeah, bone dry. To do it. it's, it's exactly right. We're we're trying to get on that. So that's good for us. Um, are there any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none. Um, then I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing and uh, sign and issue the prepared order of conditions. So moved. Second. Hey, we heard Brian. <laughs> I'm the wrong speaker. Okay. So. Discussion. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, by unanimous vote. Excellent. Great. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Pleasure. Bye. Have a good night. Okay, good night. Good night. Two. Frank, we got a couple of minutes. Is there something? Uh... Is there something we need to talk about? Oh, my background. Oh, you so, want to talk? <laughs> um, so, who's that? Have, uh, three times a week we have staff meetings, and as an introduction to the staff meeting, I have a little fact of the day. A little history fact. So since it's an election year, um, today in 1944, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was in the car there, um, had to, I uh, was giving a speech with the Teamsters, and his speech was to defend his dog Fala, with a little black uh, terrier there is, um, from being attacked by the opposition because um, Fala was his favorite pet. He took him all over the place. And the opposition at that time had said when um, FDR took Fala to the Aleutian Islands for a visit during the war, he left Fala behind and sent a destroyer back to pick him up at a cost to the taxpayers of $20 million. <laughs> now, uh, Fala was a, a gift in 1940 to FDR. Eleanor and Franklin loved him. They taught him tricks. When uh, FDR's breakfast came up in the morning, there was a bone for Fala. Um, like most dogs, Fala was really very good about baking food and from the White House staff, and he got sick, so he was banned. Uh, he had supper in the afternoon. He learned tricks. And one of his tricks that he did at state dinners and when they had VIPs was he could curl his lip in a smile. <laughs> so he was working. But, um, you know, he was the guest. He, uh, FDI took him to uh, the... Uh, I went to conference with uh, Winston Churchill in Newfoundland and all kinds of stuff. So he was the White House pet of the time. So I figured that would be an interesting story. So um, we'll see what happens. At Christmas time, did I ever sing Christmas carols, follow la 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 and all that? No. Uh, actually, he was named for one of FDR's <coughs> notorious or infamous relatives. Um, I think it was Malcolm the Outlaw from Fala Hills. Uh, so they abbreviated that to Fala. So Fala survived uh, FDR. He died in 1952. And in fact, he's buried at Hyde Park uh, next to FDR and, and uh, Eleanor uh, in their Rose Garden. So. Sometimes the uh, history stories are more important than others, but uh, it's a fun <laughs> so. Well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Not a problem. Thank you. <laughs> I think if your folks done, I'm going to hang up and I will see you all shortly. Okay, we have a uh, we have another hearing coming up at 8:20. Um, but uh, I see Seth is here, and so I see no one else from the general public. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, proceed uh, with this proceed with this hearing. So the Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing in accordance with the Mass Wetlands <laughs> Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bellingham Wetlands Protection Bylaw, on the notice of intent for the repair of an existing family septic system with a new Title V system located within a 100-foot buffer zone, boarding vegetated wetlands, and assessor's map 79, lot 3851, Fox Run Road, Bellingham. Seth LaJoy and Associates, uh, Becca Street, Salem, has submitted the filing on behalf of Jonathan Alley, 51 Fox Run Road, Bellingham. The hearing will be held at the, uh, be via Zoom on Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020 at 8.20. 2020 at 8.20. Okay. Um, Seth, got to unmute. Unmute. Figured it out. All right. Yeah, okay. So I am just really tickled to be here with you guys tonight, especially since I didn't have to wear any pants 
or leave Salem, which is always a good thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm representing Jonathan Alley and this <laughs> straight up upgrade. Um, it, there's a wetland area that's uh, to the uh, west of the property, kind of goes down the western property line. Um, we're trying to stay away as far away from that uh, wetland as possible. We are outside of the 50 foot buffer zone, but we are within the 100 foot buffer zone. The, um, it, it, the area is currently being maintained as lawn. So um, he's, he's mowing it. We are changing the grade slightly because it needs to be a raised system. Um, but uh, for the most part, it's, there's, there's not going to be huge substantive, substantive changes uh, in that backyard area. Seth, do you have the ability to just show the plan to the commission? I know it was sent out, but it's difficult sometimes to determine. Okay. I, I mean, I can I can turn my phone around and I can show you show you what I've got here. I mean, I do have the plan in front of me. Does, does that work for you? Um, or or would you prefer a PDF version of it? Because I I have no idea how to do that. But uh, okay, <laughs> um, can, Jim, can we walk him through it? <laughs> well, that's okay. We sent out. Well, um, do either of you have a PDF via email you could send over to me, and I could I could pop it on. Yeah. Do, Seth, do you have it in your email? You could email email to me or Ann or. Um, I, I I mean I can fire up my computer here and I can I can get it over to you. I have to do yeah. the same thing. Oh, Hillary's here too. I don't know if Hillary has the PDF. I have one I just have to put my turn my computer back on well here's <laughs> well so let, let's just back up a step um and distributed um the pdf to the commission has everyone had an opportunity to take a peek at that it's a relatively straightforward septic repair um it is backyard it's the lawn um Ian and I broke through the multi-flora rose and the green briar. Yeah, that was fun, right? A lot of fun, but we followed your path. Uh, I, actually, I actually accessed that from the other side. I okay. walked in the wetland area to get to, to, to do that because it was, uh, it was too thick, you know? We, we've, we've done delineation verifications that way. Yeah. No, we, we managed to get in. Uh, we followed the flags. Well, the wetland was um, accurate. There aren't a lot of um, other possibilities. Uh, systems failing, it's a repair. Uh, they're, they're meeting the Title V separation from the resource area, 50 feet. I don't know if it's, I mean, does anybody have any thoughts or questions about it? Hmm. All right, seeing none, hearing none. Um, that makes it easy. Uh, what I'll do is I will entertain a motion to close the hearing and issue and sign the prepared order of conditions. Thank you very much. This is a very interesting way of doing this. I have to <laughs> we, we, we got to take the vote first. <laughs> I'm entertaining the motion. Nobody's- Oh, wait, I'm going to sign no. off now, right? I can do that. Like, no? <laughs> Don't you want to wait and make sure we get the vote? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. That's a good plan. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Did someone move that? I did. Oh, so moved. Okay, second. Okay. Uh, motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor? I, I'd just like to go on the record that, that any time to get out of Salem is a good time. <laughs> well, anytime in October, I would agree with you, but right now, not so much. Okay. Anybody opposed? Okay. That's by unanimous vote. So, Hillary, um, once this document, the uh, order is signed, I'll give it to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Because I know, I don't think yep. Seth wants it. <laughs> no. Oh. No. <laughs> no. I know, Ian knows where to find Hillary. Know. Uh, so, I so definitely this, don't. Does this go to the Board of Health next? Is that what happens? 
Um, so um, you'll, you'll have a hearing with the Board of Health, but they will ask for a sign off and you have an order of conditions um, and I can talk to you about it. Um, okay. 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 Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. All right. Very good. Thank you very much, guys. Thank okay. you. Uh, All right. That's done. Okay. All right. We have to do a certificate of compliance. All right. So we have uh, an, another thing to uh, sign. This is um, a certificate of compliance for the Campanelli warehouses. So um, Ian and I did a lengthy um, on the ground, complete inspection of the site um, to determine the condition of the stormwater management system, um, the low impact development, water quality swales, uh, and more importantly, the replicated uh, buffer zone and wetland. And we found everything to be in remarkably good shape. In fact, um, the project manager for Campanelli, who does a couple of these, several of these, said that compared to other ones, this looks like a golf course. He's not far wrong. So, um, you know, riding herd on the people and making sure we're getting the maintenance reports and following up uh, has paid dividends. Uh, now Amazon's going to own it. We hope that we've established uh, a good protocol. Uh, and we're hoping that the landscaping firm that is currently working there will continue to work there for Amazon because if they do, we're golden. Um, the wetland replication, if you'll all recall, it's one of the most exciting things that I've ever seen. When they scraped all of the topsoil off and we saw nothing but sand, it was bright orange, the whole thing was redoxomorphic. It was, I've never seen anything, even John Rockwood, a seasoned professional, was in awe. And it was exciting. We knew the hydrology was there. Um, he got very creative, put in special features, dug little holes that support amphibian life. Um, there's been deer browsing in there, uh, small mammals. It is functioning um, as part of the, the natural environment. It's very well done. So, you know, they're looking for a certificate of compliance and um, the administrator and I highly recommend that we do that. So, Mr. So, Chairman? Yes. The, the, remember the raised, the, the, the isolated raised wetland in the center that we were worried about, you know, maintaining that exterior slope when they did their grading? That's the area that was, that's the area that was um, replicated, isn't it? Isn't that the area that ended up being replicated? At two to one? The whole center part of the, uh, of that site is, um, is maintained, posted with badges. I mean, it's natural. It's posted with badges and all the side slopes are fully vegetated. I mean, the grass is, I mean, People. Okay. No, that, that, that was that area. I was remember that there was a, a they were going to cut in and we were, we were worried about breakout and, and lowering the water table in that center area. Okay. We allowed them to fill uh, an area on the way in. You're right. That's what it was. Um, a small ice, a small isolated wetland that was kind of uh, marginal. And what we did is we, we replicated that and, we got big bang for our buck, but the area in the center is in undisturbed natural condition, uh, side slopes, there's, they're three to one, fully vegetated. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question on the... Uh... Sure. The sh emergency shut off. Remember, we had a concern with that. 
Um, I'm just wondering if that was uh, put in the prop in the proper spot. Oh my goodness. Um, we didn't get down to that kind of detail. No, we, didn't. <laughs> we did not um, get what we did do, what we do, uh, Brian, is we do get a statement from the engineer saying that um, they've adhered to the to the design, uh, to his design and the order of conditions that it was as it was written and the uh, plans of record. So I couldn't tell you specifically um, that. Ian is correct um, on this one. When they uh, filed for the form eight and submitted the asphalt drawings, we needed a statement from the engineer saying that everything that was in the plans of record was constructed in accordance with that permit. But to be honest, I didn't look for that. But what we did find is in order to keep that place looking so good, they, uh, they put in a well. They put in their own artesian well, and they said, oh, well, you'll see it under the rock. You'll mm -hmm. see it under the rock. And they kept talking about under the rock. And we went there, and there was this huge styrofoam boulder. I mean, it looked like well, we didn't realize it was styrofoam. We just saw this big boulder. The guy goes over and picks it up. <laughs> like, and that's where their well was. So they actually had um, irrigation system set up from that well. And that explains why everything was so green. And they had tree watering bags on all of their uh, plantings. So it was a drip irrigation system um, contained in a bag. And they said that those bags contained one to two weeks of watering. And the plantings were in fabulous shape. I know in the basin closest to High Street, uh, they didn't want us to go in there because of the frequency of stepping on snakes. There were, the, uh, at last check when they went in there, six snakes. Uh, the crew doing maintenance uh, wanted no part of that place. We went in anyway. We went in anyway. <laughs> we walked around the whole thing. Well, I mean, it's not like they're pythons or rattlesnakes or anything. Well, they said there were copperheads. Yeah. And, and I don't know that they know the difference between a black water snake and a copperhead. Copperheads are very, very rare. And it was really water snake habitat, but I wasn't going to argue. But our administrator made sure she stepped everywhere I did. <laughs> I followed him. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? All right. I'll entertain a motion to uh, sign the prepared certificate of compliance for 160 High Street of the Campanelli Warehouses. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, by unanimous vote. We do have one set of minutes from August 12th. I'm going to ask Mike, he's our minute maven. Uh, oh, near perfect, uh, Amy. Uh, two typos I spotted, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. It might affect things. Uh, page three, seventh line up from the bottom, first word. I think they want the other sighting. There are two ways to, to write it. Got it. It says. Sighting. I think we're on S I T I N G, not C I T I. Oh, it's exciting. Like citation, right? Anyway. Good one. That's a good one. And the next one, page. Uh, actually, one above it, too. <laughs> the line above it. Yep, got it. Oh, we don't exciting. want to arrest <laughs> the existing vegetation. Right. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, a couple lines above there. Uh, citing was also used in the, in the earlier part of the sentence before that, too. Yep. Okay. Um, this the next page down, the last thing I spotted was um, owner, Mr. Campanelli, the third paragraph, mm. right below Campanelli. Um, Unfortunately, COVID situation has consequences which have affected this project. I think they want affected. Yes. Otherwise, looks great to me. Thank you very much, Amy, as usual. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other uh, observations? Seeing none, hearing none, uh, I entertain a motion to accept the minutes of August 12th. So moved. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, by unanimous vote. So we do have a site walk scheduled uh, for the access bypass road to uh, the Red Mill. Um, and that'll be on the third. Um, and this is the only thing that we need to do. Okay, we need to, I don't know if we did this. What, what time do we want to do that, Mr. Chairman? Uh, 8.30. Um, the other item, and I don't recall if we did it, um, I'll entertain, but we'll do it again to be sure. I'll entertain a motion to cancel the meeting of November 11th and to meet instead uh, via Zoom on November 4th. Cancel on November 11th. Did we already do that? I thought we did, but I wasn't sure. I don't know if we took a vote. We discussed it. We had a consensus. Because the second meeting in November is the night before Thanksgiving. And we're not holding a meeting that night. So I ain't doing anything else. <laughs> and, and the 18th is the November town meeting. And November 11th is the week before that, and that's a holiday. So the only available night we have on a Wednesday is, is November... Fourth. So we're meeting. We have one meeting. It'll in be November. yeah. It'll be back to back with the end of October. Um, and and I already have in my calendar. I think we already did it. But okay, I'll make a motion to do that again. And maybe for our first time, whatever. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Maybe it's group deja vu. Yeah. There you go. We'll put it on making. Okay. Well, Aye. we're now we're doubly certain. All right. Now I can do a letter, and I feel comfortable with that. Okay, um, so before we adjourn, we need to find out, and I'm going to let Ian coordinate um, signatures for some of these permits. Um, Would Friday morning work better for anybody? Possibly. I could do Friday. I can't do it tomorrow, but I could do Friday. Friday morning. Whatever time. Well, what do we do, like 9.30? Whenever you've had your coffee, Jim's giving you his donuts and sconces, whatever he's making, scones today. If somebody can come earlier, you can let me know, and I'll be happy to do that. Would Would Friday morning work then? Friday sure. 9.30 works for me. Okay, good. Okay. And Brian, Brian, if you need to do it earlier or later, you can let me know. Yeah, I, I'll, I can call you. Okay. Fair enough. That'll also give us a little extra time to see if the EP issues that number tomorrow. Um, is Mr. Stanley available at any point? Yeah, yeah, Friday's good. Oh, excellent. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, I, I threw that in there. I must have got stepped on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Does anybody have anything else? No. Well, I want to know why Jim is delivering sconces. Yeah, well, you know, he wants to shed a little light on the subject. I do have a question. Hey, Jim, how close does the 40B come to on Curtis Apartments with the planning board? Oh, it's, it's approved. It is, okay. Yeah, it's approved. The state has already certified it. And uh, so we're already, we're certified at 12.6% already. Wow. 12.6% occupancy? 12.6% affordable housing in the town of Bellingham. So oh. we no longer have to, um, you know, be susceptible to 40 beats anymore. Well, that went through like a greased pig. Yeah. <laughs> is, is there any other word on the possibility of the state going forward now that that's going in across the street from the warehouse project for the state traffic light there? The application's in it. A... The balance as I commute by there on my bicycle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the application for the lights is at District 3 right now. We got positive early comments, so it's, I'm hopeful that it will be. And right now, they're with the, the widening of the road that they're doing right now, um, they're running all the utilities for those lights. So whenever they do get approval for the lights, um, they'll be able to just put the mass arm up um, and, and move right along. But at what point in time, since that's now the official entrance for construction vehicles and stuff, do they have to have a cop there? Because I thought you'd said they're going to do it 24-7 as part of their permit. 
once that open that entrance is the uh, access point, they didn't they closed down the other entrance. It's it's once they occupy it. Uh, until then, it's just another construction site. So it's up to the the police department to determine whether or not uh, it's required. And every time I drive by there, whenever they're doing any work near the shoulders, there's at least three, uh, sometimes fourth cop there. So. Yeah, I have one wave at me at 5.30 in the morning as I bike by and they were working like crazy with the lights on and everything else. Uh, but uh, traffic was backed up in both directions a little bit. There were no flies on our call. Those guys move. Boy, they already have the sidewalk going. Those guys move. In. Yeah, I mean, they built, they built that whole warehouse site. I never thought they would get it done that quickly. They told us what their construction goals were. I looked at the sculpture and said, oh, that's high in the sky. Uh -uh. Well, they ran into some difficulties. To the left of that entrance, that detention basin they talked about putting in is in, and that guy's whole front yard is now a detention basin right along the street there. Yeah, He's got well, like four feet before his driveway and of grass, and that's it. That's to Mr. Yeah. Ferragamo. He's not a happy camper. Well, that was all part of the roadway easement, though. It was in the easement. It is what it is, I guess. Yeah, um, I've actually met with uh, Mr. Ferragamo at his house, and he, he's fine with it. Uh, he recognizes it's it's part of the right of way. It's not his land. Um, he's he asked for a little bit of uh, additional screening uh, because he missed your guys's hearing, uh, and so I immediately reached out to Arco, and they immediately came back with, "Yeah, we'll put four mature or somewhat mature trees uh, right uh, to infill into where he already has three or four. Uh, so he seemed rather pleased, actually. He's not overly excited about the ongoing construction, the ledge hammering, and the lights in the middle of the night. But uh, but other than that, he, he's in good shape. Yeah. Allegedly, they'll finish some point. I think we should get. I think we should get Arco to conduct a seminar for uh, the Thaffer development people. Yeah. Easy. Okay. All right. Are we done? All right. Um. <laughs> Friday, I guess. Stay safe, everybody. All right. Well, so we'll see you Friday. Motion morning. to adjourn. So moved. All in favor. Bye. 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 Good night, everybody. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim.